Monster Party for the NES easily earns the title as probably the most creative monster game for the NES in its day. The background of the start menu when you first turn the game on, you can see kind of a quick overview of some of the monsters in this game. I have to be honest with you, these monsters are something that's dreamed up out of a straight badass trip. I mean, there's some weird shit in this game that you're gonna have to fight, but that just adds to the more fun of this game. So when you start the game up, you're gonna get a quick overview of the story of this game, and basically the story is you're this little kid named Mark who's on his way home from a baseball game, and then all of a sudden out of nowhere comes this bird flying out of the sky towards him. Apparently, the bird is having problems with monsters on his planet, and he enlists the help of Mark to help him fight these monsters and save his planet. first thing that you're going to see is this crazy screen with it, telling you that you're at the beginning of the level. I mean, look at this shit. Was this really supposed to be made for kids or something? Look at the blood, the skeletons. I mean, this probably scared the shit out of a kid at some point, you think? So the object of this game is that you're going to be trying to collect a key to open a door at the end of the level. Now, in order to get this key, you got to enter a room that will have a monster in it or sometimes it ends up having nothing in it, which I don't really understand. There's really no point in putting a door with nothing in it. Just a complete fucking waste of time. Now the first thing you're going to notice when fighting these monsters, there's going to be one thing that's going to really annoy the piss out of you. It's the fact that it takes too many fucking hits to kill these damn things. And it's really unfair because a lot of them you have absolutely no chance against killing. But there is a way to counteract the fact that they can kick your ass pretty much every time. When killing the monsters in the main area, sometimes one of them will drop a green and white pill. Now, if you pick that pill up, you'll gain the power of the monster that you formed with in the story of the game, basically turning you into a giant green bird monster, which is actually really what you want to be anytime you go in and find one of these monsters in the sub areas. Now, the cool thing about being the monster that you'll be able to shoot shit, you can fly, and basically you're now stronger than any other thing in the game. Some monsters in this game don't even make sense. I mean, the onion ring on a stick, the hash browns on a stick, I mean, what's next? Now, like right here, I'm expecting to go in, getting ready to fight a monster. And all of a sudden, he says, sorry, I'm dead. Hey, don't be sorry. Collect my question mark and move on. Now, I mean, really, what's the point of collecting question marks? Yeah, I mean, who the fuck is the boss in this game? The Riddler? If that's the case, why didn't Birdman hire Batman? Oh, wait, I stand corrected. He did. Now the sound for this game isn't too bad. I mean, some of the sound effects are kind of annoying to listen to, especially when you get hit, because you hear it every other fucking five seconds. But the worst of all is this really stupid ass cheery music at the end after you just got your ass handed to you. No, I mean, really, what was this bird man thinking anyway, asking this little kid for help? I mean, Jesus Christ. All this kid does is like to hit balls and dry hump floors. I mean, obviously, this monster ain't too bright. In conclusion, this game really isn't too bad of a game. I would recommend this to people. I mean, it's got its glitchiness at points and its ridiculous and uncreative characters are not a slight annoyance, but in the end, I would recommend this game, and it's a different game experience for you, but it's a pretty decent game. Check it out.